Another segment of buy or sell. This time is a little bit different because it joined, I joined Serenity Douglas, your host. I will be reading off of the questions to catch an onwar. And we're going to get this going with the Orange Bloods board, some buy or sell. So buy or sell. Two starting O-line today will not be starting by the end of the season. Well, catch, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in on that one. I will sell on that one only because... One, I think might be a stretch. Two, I think it's asking a lot, right? I think, um, you know, because here's the question, who are the two that they would actually throw in right now? And, I, you know, catch this. I think there's been enough evidence so far that if they needed to make a change, they would have made a change. I think we saw, uh, you know, Brendan Schooler not start in a, in a previous game where Jaron Thompson got a, an opportunity. We've seen a quarterback change that's already um, been made. So I mean, we, we've seen little things here. So I think if there was an offensive line change to be made, they would have done it. But it seems to be catch that they are willing to work with what they've got. It's, <laughs> they, they were catch. They were at no point where they willing to even bring in a grad transfer in the off season. So I, at this point, I think they really, for whatever reasons, feel solid about the offensive line. And I don't see, I, I would be surprised to see two. I would sell on that one. No, I'm with you. And I think that what you said is spot on. If they had two changes they could make, they probably, of guys that they just felt like, oh, we've got seven starters, then I think that they would have made a move. They have told us with their actions uh, and their commitment. And look, Sarkeesian was specifically asked about this last week when the idea of Hayden Connor and Andre Carrick was specifically, those two guys were specifically brought up, thought to be the next guys on, I think on the second string offensive line that could play. And Sark shot that down and said, no, what our starters need are more reps together. They need more consistency. Uh, they need to be cohesive. And he's been true to his word in that respect. And I think that when you look at a guy like Andre Carrick, I watched him on Saturday get to the second level, get to the third level. He's athletic. He, he does some things that I think jump off the film as, oh, he's got that in his tool belt. But he's still a, a little bit of a lean guy. And I think that Sarkeesian has told us he wants big SEC type linemen on both sides of the ball up front. And Carrick's not that yet. And Christian Jones is. Like, whatever. You, and same thing with Denzel Okafor. Whatever you want to say about either of those two guys, they are massive individuals. They, they are guys that can come off the bus and represent from a size standpoint. They just got to get good. But they're halfway there, I suppose, with the size. And I think that may be something that's holding back a number of the backup offensive linemen is that physically they just aren't yet there where I think this Texas offensive line would like, they, where the coaches would like to have them. And on that note, catch, buy or sell, Kyle Flood is a good O-line coach and the line will improve throughout the season. I have to sell that. And it's not because I don't think Kyle Flood's a good offensive line coach. I think he is a good offensive line coach. I think there's a question mark about, is he a great offensive line coach or a special offensive line coach? And the answer to those is no. How far down like that level of praise does it go before you get to good? I think he's absolutely good. I don't know that this offensive lineman, or this offensive line as a unit, gets better week by week just because. It could happen. They could, on war could take a completely different position than me and say, no, they they can, in game six, they'll be better than they were in game three, and that will make for a better offensive line. I don't know how any of that tangibly ensures that they're better. Um, it's not impossible, but I've just watched bad offensive line play or average offensive line play for a long time at this school, and it never gets better just because. Yeah, I would sell on that for the same reasons, Catch. I don't I don't buy the whole, well, they're older, therefore they're better. I mean, some people just are who they are as athletes, right? Some people, do, they max out. So any of you know this, and it doesn't matter from, they may improve a little bit, but at some point you've kind of reached what your athletic potential is, and this is what it is. And Catch, we've seen this offensive line last year. Um, a lot of the same, same names, similar faces. And there's a reason why we haven't seen a little huge improvement. None of these guys who were super seniors who had an opportunity to potentially go pro went pro. Why? Because 
they max, they've maxed out. This is the best that is probably going to be and the best it's going to get. So I don't see how it, it, it improves dramatically. I, I just think that they may try to hide it. And that's what Sarkeesian's job is going to have to be from a schematic standpoint. They're going to have to hide it, catch. Like some, I think some of what we saw in that Rice game, it's it was, okay, Casey Thompson, anytime you want to drop back for a pass, you're about to have a guy in your face. So what do they do? A lot of more East-West things. and. I wasn't always looking to go up the field because of that. I think you probably have to hide it with more quick releases. So um, I buy that he's a good coach, but I sell that this offensive line is going to dramatically improve. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's it, you know they were all if this was a really young offensive line with full of guys that never really Jake Majors is the guy that of that group I think oh with continued reps he's going to get better because he's so young. The other guys, you know, the other guy's been around for a while. Buy or sell, just as how bad OU plays in September doesn't matter for the rest of the season, how good UT plays against Rice doesn't matter for the rest of the season. Anwar. Wait, just as, wait, just as bad, read, read that one more time, just as bad just as, as- OU played in September. Uh-huh. And how good UT played against Rice doesn't matter for the rest of the season. Neither of those things matter. matter. Well, then I'll buy if that's the case. Yeah. I mean, I'll buy because, catch, you know, you and I talked about it. Uh, you know, the, the OU in September thing is kind of a blur. I you know, remember it was a couple of years ago where OU nearly lost to Army at home. And Kyler Murray was the quarterback of that game. And there's just a weird is getting off to a slow start, kind of sh shaky start, rocky start for OU last year. What, it went two games back-to-back -back catch, was it? Was it K-State, Iowa State? And, and I'm not quite sure, but I think K-State came first in Iowa State. And they still end up going to the Big 12 Championship and still winning it. This is a team that even <laughs> Texas plays them and Spencer Rattler gets benched and then that ends up kind of being the fighting moment. So. I, I would say that 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 for OU and the same thing for Rice. You know, are, are we going to say that the team that beat Rice is going to be the same team that we see against TCU? I mean, the, the obvious answer is going to be no. The team that beat Rice and the domination is going to see the same team we see this upcoming weekend versus Texas Tech. I don't know. It's going to be a pretty. It's pretty evenly matched so far. So, no, nah, I, I, I would I would definitely say. You know, we see Texas beat Rice in Louisiana, two non-Power 5 teams, and then we've seen them lose against Arkansas, which we would say is probably the lower level of the SEC. So I, I don't know if we can count any of what we've seen so far as like the accurate barometer of what the season looks like. No, Onward is 100% right. I don't know if they're equal, like in fairness to how I heard the question, he used the word just. So it was like, just as Oklahoma and their start means nothing in September, Texas and Rice is exactly the same. In the spirit of just asking the question out loud, I don't know if they're even, but I don't even know how to answer it, honestly, Anwar, because mm -hmm. nothing that Matt, nothing that OU does in September matters, ever. Ever. I've never seen it matter. I have, over the last 20 years, seen Texas fans point to September and say, oh, man, we got them right, baby. They are right. And we we are, look how, look how we did against Rice. We are ready. Never seen that happen. I have seen it suggested 15 times in the last 20 years, probably. And... <laughs> More years than not, Oklahoma wins. And more years than not, it just doesn't matter. Now, the question is, does Texas versus Rice matter? How much of that matters? And I don't know yet. So I feel like I know one side. So it's probably a buy on some level because the two things aren't completely equal. But yeah, man, this weekend's big on war. Like, I don't know who Texas is, but we'll know a little bit more after Texas Tech. And this isn't typically a game we say that about with Texas. We we typically point to Texas Tech as a game that sh Texas should win comfortably. And if it's, a, if it's a problem, then that's a problem. But this Texas Tech game, it feels like a fair, fair and square fight. It feels like 
you know, Texas Tech, if they come in here and make this a fourth quarter game, nobody should be surprised. But it's also possible that Texas has more in them than than a fourth quarter game. And no outcome would surprise me, but it feels like a lot's on the everything's on the table. And that's kind of fun. Yeah, I don't know what's get catch, you know, again, I've been reading a lot on uh, you know, Texas Tech rival site, just kind of catching up and gleaning some information, watch Matt Matt, Pearl's, Matt Wells press conference uh yesterday and, and hearing what he had to say. And there's you know, like you said, it's it's really it's it's fascinating. There's a stat. And I'm not going to be 100% correct with it, but I know they pointed out on the Texas Tech website that you know, Texas is averaging about 240 rushing yards, 245, something to that effect. And Tech is giving up about 55 rushing yards a game. Um, and you can talk about quality of competition. And clearly they haven't seen anyone as good as Bijan. Uh, but, you know, this kind of little key matchup. So it's going to be, it's to your point, it will be a very accurate. I mean, we, tech, tech, no matter what, they're still a 3 0 team. Um, and so, and this no matter what, this is a team that had Texas in life or death last year in a game that Texas Tech should have won. And there's been games that are just tr- catch, just close, close every single year versus Tech. And I would expect the same again this year. By yourself, Casey Lee's team on 50 plus percent scoring drives. Can he continue his ridiculous efficiency this week? Catch, what do you think? So the more than fifty percent of his drives go for points this week. I'm guessing. The more than fifty that that that's been more than fifty percent. I mean, he's like at overall. ninety or eighty or something. Yeah, like, like that. overall, he's he's in the nineties. So he's not going to keep up that rate. I think if the if, if we're inventing a question, does Texas score with Casey Thompson at quarterback more than fifty percent of their drives this week? I mean, Anwar, that basically means we think Texas is either going to win or lose, right? I mean, yeah. if Texas has 10 drives and they score five times, that puts them in the possibly into the 30s. Mm-hmm. And that feels like a good place for them to be, potentially. Um, but what do you think? Buy or sell, you, you would take greater than 50% on scoring drives against Texas Tech. I'll tell you, I'll buy on that. I'll buy, I'll buy on the upside of what this offense could be. You know, I'll buy on the upside of this, you know, the schematic and the scheming that Sarkeesian will have. I'll buy that Xavier Worthy is getting more comfortable and Jordan Winnington um, still has some, you know, some capabilities and won't have the drops that we saw against Arkansas. So I will buy on that and buy on the, on the run game. I, I want to go. I don't believe the crazy pace to your point, the 90% pace that we're going to have something crazy like that coming out, but 50, I, I would, I can definitely say that. Sure. I'll buy on that. I'm it, in, even if it didn't mean to be, it's a really good question because I'm really on the fence. I kind of feel like if they have 10, they're going to score five times. I feel like if I go above that, we're maybe talking about starting to creep into the high 30s, 40s. And I don't know. Like, I, I don't know that this Texas, I need to see Texas against another halfway decent defense before I, I, I can really say what I think this unit is. And because Rice was just too easy. It would, it would have been good if Texas had won that game 48 to nothing, but Texas, Rice could have been capable of a stronger pushback where you could just watch the game and see the athletes and go, oh, they got good players. It never really felt like that a lot on Saturday against Rice. I think Texas Tech's going to bring that to the table. I'm really fascinated by where this goes. I pr- I guess I'll go with a baby buy on that, Anwar, and go above it. But I'm. it really feels like the 8.5 wins question all summer long where one day you wake up and you're like, no, they're going to win nine. Mm-hmm. And then they practice once and you're like, oh, maybe it's eight. <laughs> and that's... I- how many points do you think it takes to, to win this game on Saturday? That's what I've been trying to figure out in yeah. my head. I don't know because I can't. I don't know what this Texas defense is. I think Texas is going to have problems on defense on Saturday. They don't get to the quarterback. They're not forcing turnovers. And they're going to play a team that's capable at running the football and passing the football. I don't think they're great at either. But it, doesn't, it may not take great 
to take advantage of this defense. I think it's going to take 38. So I think yeah. I think we're talking about a game that's 38-35, mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, you know, I hate to put the defense on blast and and just say that out on a Wednesday that I think this game is going to play into the 30s. It kind of feels that way, though, like until – and what's funny is Texas defensively, maybe they'll dominate them on war and we'll come out of it going, whoa, Arkansas was an aberration. And this defense really is good, but whew, I just don't know. I don't know who's making plays on Saturday. I think the anticipation for this game is so high. It kind of feels like game one all over again because we don't really know what we're about to get into. That's actually know. a great point because this on war, would you say – the coaches will say this, right? The start of Big 12 play is the start of a new season. Yes. So, I mean, there's some legitimacy to that. I do think Texas fans are back to thinking of this team in a first game format. I am. I have no idea what we're going to see. So, it's like, no. show me. whatever, Good, bad, ugly, indifferent, great, whatever the case may be. I really just want to see it happen. The Arkansas game unwound. So many, you know, it takes more than a week to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Or Humpty Dumpty didn't really fall off the wall that bad. Texas fell off the wall in Arkansas bad. Little egg pieces all over the place. Hmm. Like, it, you can't just glue that back together in a week and be like, oh, Humpty Dumpty's cool. We'll find out. Maybe the pieces are back together again. And Humpty Dumpty is back to being a full, complete egg. Um, I just don't sense that yet. And Saturday's fun. I even like the 11 a.m. kickoff. Let's just get the damn thing over with. For real. <laughs> and for, listen, I know Texas fans complain about 11 a.m. kickoffs. I'm okay with it. Let's just get in, get out. You know, because you know, there's only a small percentage of them that are hanging with us in the post game. And so we're the ones up to two in the morning. So I'm okay with 11 a.m. You know what I've learned, Serenity? I've learned that I like night games when it's a good game. Yeah. When it's not a good game, it just starts to feel late. And it's like, oh my God, it's 1245 in the morning and we're doing post game on rice. Like, come on. <laughs> it's okay if you're doing it at four o'clock in the afternoon. That's like business as usual. So I've learned just recently, it, I'm, I love primetime games. But let them be in the, in, you know, good teams. These aren't good enough teams to put into prime time. They deserve 11 a.m. Yeah. right now. Rice yeah. does you not should, deserve to be at nighttime. You should be ranked if you're going to play at night. <laughs> and the moment you're not ranked, just get the game over with. You two <laughs> average teams don't need to be taking up everybody's entire Saturday. Okay, okay agreed. <laughs> Moving on. Buy or sell. They solely on play. Casey is our starting quarterback against OU. Anwar. I, I Yeah. I don't. I, I, they're. I, I can't. It, if Sarkeesian has to make a change at quarterback, this season is going off the rails. I mean, if he's. Hudson Card Anwar will play if Casey Thompson gets hurt. But, yes. you know. And hopefully, I don't, Casey Thompson I don't, does not get hurt. Then Casey Thompson will start the rest of the season. Absolutely. And I think. I think. Onward, and I both believe that at this point. Yeah, I, I think I think it's I think it's he, he, they've moved on. I think there's transition. I think it's all about you know learning and and going from there. I just think catch the the most fascinating thing that I, I will just have to see catch and just I, I'm just dying to see if if Hudson Card is the holder against um, uh, Texas Tech, which we fully a- anticipate. You know, it's four games, catch. And I think Hudson Card and the staff is going to have to make a decision as far as what they're going to do from a red shirt perspective. Because I don't think you want to blow a red shirt year for your backup quarterback strictly as a holder. I just don't, I'm just not quite sure what that's going to, what that looks like. And just for those who remember, like last season did not count. Like that was a free year. So he still has five. Like right. I wonder if it matters as much. To, I, I don't know. It's a, I think under normal circumstances, it absolutely matters. I just wonder because of the COVID year, he still has five to play four. And this is a guy that I think mentally started preparing himself to enter the season. He was going to hang out for two more years. 
I think Casey feels the same way. I think both of those guys are like, yo, start two years, go to the pros. Correct. Now, it may not go down like that, but I wonder with Hudson. We'll find out, right? Yeah. I mean, we'll find because- out, but I'm with, I get it. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to be a quarterback and blow a year of eligibility because you're holding the, you're, you're holding extra points and, and field goals. Like, you know, that's got it. At some point, someone else has to figure out how to do that job. <laughs> I mean, I want, I want every lick of eligibility available just, just because, just to be. Charlie saved. Brewer just is like, I- boy, you better save that year. <laughs> I mean, after this season, after this game against Tech, and I know I've done, I played my four, and then I do one more, and it, it, it officially counts. I don't know, man. You can sit hey, me down. Hey, Serenity, how did they do that in track? So in football, you can maintain your a red shirt year of eligibility mm-hmm. if you play four or less games. So a third of the season. It's the same. It is. It's, yeah, it's around the same. Like, you can't run in, I think, at least three meets before they're like, no, you basically used up your whole season. And then that's it. Because I don't know the answer to that for every sport. Do you, Anwar? No. Mm-mm. I have no idea what it is in it's basketball. It's really confusing. Because we actually have someone on our team who is going into her seventh year. And this is actually her third school. So now I'm kind of like, I don't know any of the rules anymore. I, is this legal? <laughs> well, yeah, because she could have, she could have gotten a super. She could have been granted an extra year of eligibility. So that sixth year, in the middle of the COVID year, which gives her the seven. But now she's working on her third degree. Good for her. <laughs> she likes school. <laughs> she, but hey, when this thing's school. all said and done, she will have used her time. Yes. Yeah. See, if that had been me, I'd be on school number seven. Like, oh, I just changed majors again. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not interested in that at all. (laughs) Okay. All right, Serena, give us one more by yourself. Okay. Oh, dang. Okay, one more. Then I kind of want to make it a good one. Yes. Please do. Oh, I like, oh, yes. We vote for that. (laughs) (laughs) I like this one. By yourself. If Texas played Arkansas on a neutral field in four weeks, you would be tempted to pick Texas. Oh, hell. Come hey, on, what man. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, before you answer the question, Anwar, because wa- you and I have to figure out what our answers are, this begs the question. If Texas and Arkansas played that game 10 times, how many times are you picking Texas? Because this is ultimately is how much you think that was a fluke. What's a fluke? I mean... 10 times, I mean, nine out of 10. Yeah. And I'll just, I just give the one, like maybe something crazy happened, but Arkansas, look, Arkansas was the better team. Like there was nothing about, it wasn't like a fluke play at the end where you said, oh man, Arkansas just found a way to pull that thing out. It was, it was, it was from the darn near close to start to finish an absolute domination. So there's nothing that I can show show that says, man, Arkansas just got lucky. No, Arkansas was just a better team. And they were more prepared and they were more more ready. Anwar, you've seen The Godfather, right? Yep, yeah, I I try to ignore that I've seen part three, but I have seen that as well. It is very, I don't know why I'm going to this this scene, but it works. You know, when Sonny beats up his brother-in-law in the alley, Mm-hmm. At one point, he takes the lid off of a trash can and just starts beating him down. He starts beating Carlos down with the trash can lid. When that fight was over at the end of it, I didn't walk away from it thinking, I wonder how different that would have been if Carlos had just landed the first punch. It was so emphatic. God damn, he beat that dude with a trash can lid. Like, it, it, it was disrespectful in its beating. Arkansas beat Texas disrespectfully. They beat them, like, made them, made them quit at the end for some of those dudes. There were dudes on defense that were like, you know what, I'll tackle next week. And, you know, I think that quarterbacks lost their jobs and 
Sarkeesian found his entire way questioned, I think, by large portions of the fan base that said, what have we just got our hands on? We're not far enough removed from that. That was 10 days ago. And now people want to be like, how likely do you think it would be if in four more weeks they played on a neutral field? They didn't play on a neutral field. They played in Fayetteville. And if that game were played 10 times, nothing about that game suggests that they would Texas could scrape by with more than one, as Anwar said. So I think, you know what I think Texas fans need to do? They need to chill the hell out with Arkansas. You know what? Just stop talking about Arkansas. You, you don't get to play them again this year. And they whooped Texas so bad. Texas just needs to not talk about that. Because I don't, you don't see it. You don't see teams in the NBA Finals get swept, and then be like, "Oh man, but we should play that again. Play best out of seven. See how that goes." Nobody does that. When you get whooped, part of getting whooped, you gotta take your whooping, man. You can't be like, "Oh, I slipped." But slipped it doesn't feel lost by real. 30. It doesn't feel real. So just as like a different perspective, I don't think that. Not that Texas wasn't ready necessarily, but when I interviewed the guys beforehand, they're just kind of like, yeah, we're ready, we're ready. I didn't believe that they were ready, honestly. I felt like because they knew that they were facing, like Omar said, the bottom of the barrel in the SEC, they just kind of doubted their abilities. And I have done the same thing, even in some races. You know, I'm like, this is not big 12 championships. I do not have to worry about this opponent right now. And then they really whoop me. And I'm just kind of like, oh, that's what we're doing. And I think that that's basically like what they were feeling during that game. Yeah, but you like know, the equivalent right out the of game, that. I was like, dang, this is how you guys are deciding to play because they didn't play that. It, they didn't play like that against Rice. But maybe they were just looking ahead to us. It's serenity. Let me put it. Let me, <laughs> let me put it to you like this: when you when you lost a race, okay, when the off day happens and Serenity Douglas, nine time All American doesn't win an individual race she loses by what amount what's the equivalent of a 30 point loss in track you're right (laughs) shikari richardson shikari richardson getting smoked was maybe yeah was was that is that the equivalent but didn't we come away from that with like she wasn't like she really wasn't ready like she shouldn't even been in that yeah so like, she wasn't ready but she doesn't know that she wasn't ready if that enough. makes sense and you think that's where okay. kind of texas was mentally they just didn't absolutely. know absolutely absolutely so they're well, then, kind of that, we all kind of have it you know like a no like i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready to jump into this and then your mind is telling you obviously from the results you're not go back to the drawing board or Arkansas, they look like a completely different team playing against Texas than they did up against Rice. The previous. No, no that's, the... you're right. I mean, that, that could happen, but I, then the, the scary part for me, Serenity, if that's the if that mentality uh, exists on a team that hasn't won a Big 12 title since 2009, that's <laughs> only been to one Big 12 championship game over the last, what was it, five or so years. A team that finished third in, in the conference, you know, out on the outside look, looking in. You know, the, Texas hasn't accomplished enough to look at anybody and say, Psh, light work, Psh, that's easy. Like that, we, we, we could just show up and roll the ball out and beat this team. That, that we haven't seen that. And so if they feel that way about, Arkansas, then God forbid how they feel about Texas Tech. Because if they think if they think Arkansas is light work, well clearly they're gonna think Texas Tech is light work. They're gonna be in it for another rude awakening. Like if that's the what what you're saying, if that's the mentality, that's actually one of the most concerning things I've had. Because that means that these co- the, the coaches aren't getting these guys right mentally. This team that isn't right mentally. And we'll have there'll be a lot more disappointments like that if they just think Man, we just better than everybody else because the only team that they won't think that about going this season might, might be OU and potentially Iowa State. And they're going to think they can just show up and beat the hell out of everyone else. So 
I don't necessarily think that it was a mentality going into that game. I don't think any of them really thought that, if that makes sense. But I understand where they were coming from, where it's like, they didn't, they didn't purposely doubt this team. You know what's but interesting? You kind of look, you kind of like, look up at the board during the third quarter, and it's like, you know, wait, I, like, I'm curious. That though, Serenity, I'm curious in the sense that people all week tried to tell them, yeah, you know, this could be a game. Like Onwar and I've been talking about this game for six months, and I was telling Onwar, like, yo, man, I don't know how to even talk about this game because you won't believe the level of angst and hatred that they're going to bring to the stadium. They don't even realize it. They're just all going to show up and that place is going to be crazy. And I felt like people tried to tell them, oh, did you ever run a race? Yes. Where mentally, you were like, this is going to be easy. This, this is a little bit of kind of a week off. But in the days before the race, all of your teammates and people that you talked about were like, yo, I know this isn't I know this isn't the relays, and I know this isn't Big 12-er, but that girl over there that you shouldn't be worried about, you know, it's it's just a weird dynamic. I we can't imagine that that happens. I don't any race thinking that it's necessarily going to be easy, but I have run a race, and at the finish line, I'm like, what just happened? Like, at no point did I decide to give up. At no point did I decide to think that it was easy. But obviously, when I go back and look at the tape, I could have gone there. I could have gone at the 300. I could have gone at the, it, it, and it's like, why didn't I? I don't know. So that's what I really feel like happened to the team. Honestly, I just kind of feel like it got to a point in the quarters where they were getting smacked so bad, there was really no coming back. And I and think- I'm with you. All I'm saying is Texas fans just need to take that loss. Yeah, or take that L. Take the L and look, don't bring it up anymore. <laughs> just don't mint that because all you're gonna do is get me saying really harsh things as a reminder of what happened just don't bring that up you know how mad i would be if i got into a fight with somebody and got whooped and then somebody just kept hey catch what if y'all fought with tire irons would that have changed the fact that you got your butt like no stop stop yeah. trying to relive that awful l what you want to be able to do is get to the end of the season and nobody be bringing up Arkansas ever again. But you got to play some real teams and do some damage before people are going to talk stop talking about that butt whipping. Like you, the, yeah. the thing about the thing is Texas's rep took a hit. Yeah, it, it just did. And like you can get that back. This Texas football team can get that back. But you can't get it back in like ten days. So are you saying so? <laughs> yes. Yes. I had to hear you say it. <laughs> hey, I heard you say I'm right, and those words almost never come out of anybody's mouth. So this is easily my favorite YouTube segment that we've ever done. <laughs> I'm going to just make that a ringtone. Sounded glorious. Okay. <laughs> I like note. it. I like reading the questions out to you guys. Oh, we have fun doing this. That's why we did it. I'm a fan. You want to say, tell them to like the video, ring the bell. Like, wrap us really up, Serenity. Boss, man. <laughs> wrap it up. Wrap Just us say up, goodbye. Serenity. I'm sorry, guys. Thank you for joining us for another segment of Buy or Sell. This was very interesting. On Catch's note, let the Arkansas game go. I am your host, Serenity Douglas, joined by Anwar and Catch. This was great. I like this. And like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas Football YouTube channel.